everybody, it's Tyler here at the Week Zero event, checking in team number 1768, the show about robotics coming in out of Massachusetts. Um, by the way, here with Aiden and Yi, and uh, this robot here, absolutely great looking uh, arm as they go through, a really wide intake. We really wanted to kind of feature uh, their progress so far throughout the build season, what's gone into this, and then we'll talk about a little bit about their path planner and what they're looking at doing for autonomous as well too. So keep an eye on the cool parts about this robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Starting on this robot, let's talk about the uh, intake uh, that you have, a uh, really wide intake that I see. I'd love to hear more about the material choice that's gone into this, uh, how you came up with this intake, and then we'll kind of work our way through, Aiden. Yeah, of course. So, again, our main uh, design constraint when building an intake this year was we wanted to have it as wide as possible. A lot of these teams with the claws, you have to be real precise in intaking on the field, and we figured that this wider intake would really help us off. And we also wanted to not complicate it and not really have the handoff like a lot of teams are doing. So we mounted it straight to our arm. So we have this wide intake with um, three degrees of freedom. Each roller rotates independently and driven from each Neo 550 with uh, Ultra Planetary, as well as the intake rotates freely. Full 360 degrees on this chain drive here and then uh, gear driven for each roller on either side. And Yi, if you want to show us intaking one. Sure. So we went with the flange grabber. Uh, we figured that that was easy. And a lot of teams focusing on just upright cones, it's easier to knock them down than to stand them back up. So we pick up a lot of knockdown codes. And we, still, we also have the ability to pick up upright cones. It's just not as consistent right now. That's what I was going to ask. So when you're looking at from there, I mean, you're right. It's just easy to knock down a cone. Or if yeah. you're dropping it through the shoot or something, too. Exactly. There's ways to get that to be knocked down, kind of in the orientation you're looking for. I really want to uh, talk more about this uh, this 360 uh, rotator they have. How have you found that has worked out Like when you're going to intake? like, yeah. Are you actually utilizing that during a match so far? Yeah, so it allows us to, no matter what our arm angle is, set the angle flat or in our case a little bit angled up to pick up the cone and we're also going to use that actuation in the future picking up cubes we're planning to have a little wedge on the back and then that actuation is going to actually capture the cube um, as soon as we drive over it similar to a lot of uh, 2019 intakes so where's that going to go kind of on the bottom right yeah here? kind of on the bottom a little wedge shaped type thing and then this is going to actuate over it'll start flat and then actuate over as soon as we capture that cone in or that, that Cuban. I look forward to seeing that progress, but so far in the field looking really good with the cones, so excited. Yeah. And it's such a, you know, the, the cones are such a difficult challenge, especially the way that you're looking at getting the, the acquisition. So cool to see that you're being able to do that so well so far. As we go into this arm here, this is a massive arm that your team yeah. has, multi-stage as well too. Yeah. So talk to me more about what's gone into it, some of the packaging uh, that has gone into it as well too, and let's demonstrate it as well. Yeah, of course. So uh, we have a two, two moving stage arm, three tubes total. We have a four inch, a three inch, and a two inch tube. Um, with custom machined uh, bearing blocks in the upper and lower. So we have an upper four and then two in the three inch tube and then one lower in the two inch tube. So we, it is belt driven uh, right off this Max Planetary and a Falcon. Um, that connects right to the three inch tube and then we have this webbing drive connecting the three inch tube on this side, the three inch tube to the two inch tube so it's cascade rigged uh, with tensioners up top for both the belt and the webbing. Uh, Yi, if you want to go through a couple of our presets. Yeah, let's take a look. So this is the uh, high preset to our high cone node, middle preset, as well as our low preset. And as you can see, we took a lot of time designing this uh, and iterating on this energy chain. Yeah. This energy chain loops around and it's on a constant four spring carriage that goes up the two inch tube and all the way through. So we found that to be pretty smooth. 
We'll and talk, uh, let's say we'll talk about programming in a second, but it, it, honestly, this whole operation is super smooth for your team. Yeah. When you're looking at from approaching the game challenge, is this the type of arm you always had in mind, or were there any other iterations? Yeah, pretty much from day one. I mean, we talked a couple about a high pivot, a couple other things, but after really that first weekend after kickoff, we settled on this arm idea, and um, yeah, we just kind of kept stuck with it, and this is what we ended up with. Working we're, on. We're, we're really proud of these. Um, these, we call them butterfly plates. Okay. Big hourglass shape that really stiffen it up, as well as have our pivot, our spacer there, uh, 3D printed, as well as it has inserted aluminum spacers as well for extra stability. And we bolt the sprocket right onto that. And it's driven down below, again, on Max Planetaries. We, uh, we're in the process of building a lighter arm. So hopefully we're equal, for week one, we'll have a lighter arm here that's about six pounds lighter, all considered. And we made a custom gearbox for the uh, telescope drive, again, just to limit the space as there's not that much space to swing through. I was telling you guys earlier, uh, before we started the interview, you definitely have one of the cleanest robots we've seen, especially here at week zero yeah. as well, too. So well done on the mechanical side. Let's talk about some of the programming side with the E. Uh, let's start out with the uh, autonomous modes uh, that are on screen as well, too. And uh, talk to me about uh, Path Planner and some of the different auto modes that your team is implementing uh, this year for the Charged Up Challenge. Yeah, so last year we had a different uh, tank drive, but, and we used Pathweaver for that. But this year, after switching to Swerve, we found that Pathweaver wasn't working too well for us, so we switched to Path Planner. So in general, we have three main starting places on the left, the middle, and the right. Uh, here we have our uh, right starting point, in which we start from here, score one, go grab the second cone, and then come back to score again. We found that Path Planner has worked really, really well for us. Uh, today, unfortunately, it wasn't uh, really working for us, though. But uh, that was there. For our middle, we don't have anything too complicated yet. We just have score the code and then try to balance on the charging station. Uh, we weren't really able to test that today, but testing it back at home, it worked pretty well. Uh, we have a similar one to the one before. Oops. Uh, similar one to the one before, but starting on the left side, as you can see, they're all pretty similar, just going to grab one and then going back. At first, we didn't want to make it too complicated, but later on, going into week three, week five, we're planning on grabbing more cones or cubes, and then we're also planning to get here to be able to go back to the uh, charging station and balance. Something I want to ask you too, looking to the future as well, is your team like doing anything with uh, auto balancing or are there sensors on your robot potentially? Uh, yeah, we are definitely going to need to be able to do auto balancing. Right now, we're using a PID loop with a gyro in order to get it properly balanced. So we have, in our initial testing, found that this is actually a really difficult challenge, just going up, and then when it reads zero, it goes back down. So it's going to be really difficult to get that in tune, especially going faster. Well, I'll give your team a lot of credit here. Uh, you watched on the field a couple matches. You guys look great so far, especially with the cone uh, acquisition manipulators to 1768. Thank you so much once again. Wish you best of luck during the season, as it's coming up very soon for your team. And can't wait to see what other iterations bring. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge-up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.